one word message in this video. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the source and the reason behind this message. And this is behind something that I've been kind of reading and meditating and studying on because I thought this was fascinating. I knew the source of it, but I just like to read about it because I, I, when you have the spiritual maturity and you kind of know where your grounding is, it's nice to like look to see, okay, let's see how the, how the pieces on, on the chessboard are being played. So I did this. So I read, and I'm sure you've, you would have, you have heard of this book series an audio series that came, have been out for years called Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh. Now, this is not meant to discredit uh, the heart of Mr. Walsh. I don't know him. I never met him. I never talked to him. I think he's a good-hearted man. I think that his intentions are really good in helping people. I know other people have gone on his sites and on social media and condemned him for saying that his motives are simply financial. I don't know that. I don't know that. I don't know him. All I can do is I can just read what I what he has published and come to my own conclusions based on my prayers with the Holy Father and my experiences of prayer with I with our Father and can come to conclusions through that. So this is what I've come up with. And I think this is a very key factor. Now, this book, or the series of books, is, or at least three, I think there's a fourth one now that he just came out with. Um, I have nothing against, from a moral standpoint, how it's helped people in this physical world, how it's helped them kind of overcome people on the shallow level, everything above the surface. And for that, I commend him for that. You know, if that is his object objective, straight out. But for those of you who have read this book, and I have read his, I've read, or I've listened to his, um, the first book, the second book, and part of the third. I have not finished the third. Um, basically, it is, a, it is a person who has come to the, a very, a hard point in his life and he's heard he's heard a voice and he's asked questions solid questions questions that many of us ask um, many different fronts and basis from God to say okay why this why this why that why this why this and he gets the answers and it leads to another question that he asks and so forth and so on well, I'm going to tell you, the first half of the first book, I can't disagree with. I can't. I thought, this is solid. I'm listening to it. And then it kind of meandered a little bit, and then it diverted, and it changed, and it got to the point where I was like, wow. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Now, I'm not judging the heart of the person who wrote it. I'm not judging Neil's heart. Because I really believe that he had this man, and I've, I've seen, I've read his life story. I saw where he came from. And they made a movie about it, too, which you, which you can actually see. And I recommend the movie because it is not, it does not go into the, into the teachings of what is in the books. It's talked about his life experiences. So for that, I would recommend it. The books I recommend too, but it is to, to read it with, with the foundation in mind. And that is not meant to come at the response as, a, as an element of condemnation, but kind of a basis of where we all stand. The truth of what we already have. The truth of what we've already been given through an acceptance and most importantly, the point of this message, to seek. Here is what threw me off. I would say probably about halfway through the first book, Mr. Walsh was asking whoever he was talking to, he was asking questions. He was getting answers to everything. 
and it was leading to other questions. Granted, it was kind of switching around here and there, but he was getting answers instantly. Now, let me ask you this. When you pray with God, do you get an immediate answer from God? Now, this is not a an, an intention of deception from our Heavenly Father. This is a an objective of fulfillment because what does he want us to do to find that answer? He wants us to seek. People say, well, this is knock and you shall, you know, the door shall open, ask and you shall receive. Very true, but when it comes to our understanding and our knowledge of him, he wants us to seek. You will find him when you seek after him with all of your heart. And the Bible tells you too in Matthew that the kingdom of heaven is a tre is like a treasure hidden in a field. And a person with joy in his heart would sell everything he has and get that field. And everything he has is stuff that's insignificant to receive something that is beyond what you can see and is something that is beyond the surface. That's why he says it's hidden in a field. Even that verse says you find it and then you hide it again. So it is it is amazing. You find it and you know it. So you know it in your mind, but you hide it again. So it's hidden. It's not hidden from his children. It's hidden for his children. God wants the, the the wonder and the love of the experience of God is the joy of seeking something we've already been given. God's given us everything. We just need to sell what is insignificant, which we cannot benefit from. Invest in what is fulfilling of our true spirit of our life and our love and go and uncover that treasure that's hidden in that field. And it says, we dig it up, but we, 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 but we hit it again. So there we go. There we go. When I see testimonies from people where God just answers stuff, I can't, I don't want to come at those people because, you know, I'm not that person. You know, if you go deeper into the studies of him, of what he's, uh, of what this whoever he was talk, whoever he was talking to has told him, it gets a little radical. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go breaking that down. I'm gonna let each and every one of you do that if you decide to do that. But I'm not, I'm not seeking to to come against any person's heart, any person's objective to try to help other people, any person because God can use anything to help bring people closer to Him. God can take. This work, even if it's not meant to be toward him, it could help somebody who reads it open up their heart to accept Jesus. You never know. You don't know. So I don't like diverting people and telling people, don't do this. Stay away from that person. I'm never going to tell you that. If you feel it in your heart to listen to something, take the meat off the bone. Let the Holy Spirit just focus on what he sees what, what do you see? And then he, he can divert you directly to the right path. That's that's the way, that's what we need to do as a body of Christ to help each and every one of those people who want, who are so hungry to understand God's heart. I really feel there's a lot of God's heart in Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh. Do I feel it's completely God who he's talking to? I don't. Just because God doesn't give everything straight out 100%, he wants you to seek. He wants you to seek. But if, if that helps motivate some person to open up their heart, to accept Jesus, to let the Holy Spirit fill their heart for what they can learn through prayer in him, in the Holy Spirit, good for them. Let, it, let him do it. Because God can use anything. He can use anybody. He used Paul, a person who hunted and persecuted Christians and wrote half of the New Testament. He used David, an adulterer, a person who committed murder, and he called him a man after his own heart. Abraham, who committed, who did like interracial marriage, at the time that was just heresy. God loved him. It goes throughout the Bible. He loves every single one of his children. So use everything, but seek. 
But just remember, you've been given. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you've accepted him and opened up your heart, you've been given everything. And now the treasure is there, but it's hidden in a field. But the field is right there. Just sell everything that just doesn't is insignificant that's going to fall away. And go for what you can't see with your eyes and ears, but what God's revealed in the Holy Spirit. And just dig that straight up and accept it and just love it and just walk in the fullness of something that you never even thought was possible before. I had somebody ask me several times over the years, say, you need to mention about this book. These, 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 these books, you need to talk about it. I said, I want when I'm ready. I want when I'm ready. There we go. Isn't that simple? Straight and forward. Just under 11 minutes. Oh my gosh, that's a record for me. <laughs> I love y'all. God bless you. Have a great night. Now I'm over 11 minutes. That's okay. What am I going to do? What are you going to do? Sue me? <laughs> Sue me in God's holy name. <laughs> I love y'all. Have a good night. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.